the lesson and assimilate the lesson. We know you have other, other lessons that you're studying. We want this to be one of your very important ones. Uh, we are studying, as you know, what is called alien entities. By alien entities, we mean, we mean demon spirits from outer space, that they don't belong here on this earth. They're not creatures of the earth. They're, they're, they, they are aliens. They're foreigners that don't belong here. And that we are studying them and how they manipulate and hurt uh, human persons. And we had the book just off the press uh, teaching you uh, in, in, a, in a prose form. In, in, the, in the syllabus, in the teaching syllabus here, it's an outline form uh, for, for ministers, for teachers, that they can take one word or one sentence and speak from that. In the book, you've got prose uh, that, that's following into a story. And we hope that you can receive both of them and use them. The book you can loan to others, the syllabus you should not, it's your, what you have. We've come to <coughs> lesson 13, which is uh, found on page 54. And we're giving you a further illustration of an alien entity in a girl. Uh, and uh, you see in your introduction that it is a, a girl named Clarita. Uh, she is 17 years old. Uh, she is a Filipina. Uh, there's a, a mistake there you might correct. Uh, when you end it with an O, it is a man. When you end it with an A, it is a girl. It's a typographical error. So it is a Filipina girl. And, uh, and, and, and uh, she knew a life tragedy, such as few people that I have ever met. When she was 12 years old, her mother died, and she became a harlot. And when she was 17 years old, she was put in prison in Manila, the capital city. She came from Panay down in the islands. And uh, she was put in the, the prison, and in that historic Bilibid prison that had been a jailhouse for 300 years, first put there by the Spanish, and then used by the Filipinos, and then used by the Japanese during World War II. Um, a strange phenomena. I, I came to her there in that she was bitten by two creatures that no one could see except her. She could see them. And I want you to study the story. Uh, we have this in a book form where you can read it. We also have it in a television form and, and a 30-minute and a program that you can put it right into your player and look at it. It's the, the whole story. I had it done in the Philippines. And you can see the story of the girl as she became possessed and how she was, she was set free. And the, the thing that's amazing about this is that the chief warden of the prison, uh, uh, he kicked her and she said, you will die. And in four days, uh, he was dead. And she had already spoken to a doctor. A doctor mocked her and says, you're trying to get a lot of publicity in the newspapers and laughed at her. She said, you will die. He died in one day. And so when we came there, the, 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 the mayor, the mayor was a, uh, uh, a big, strong, healthy person. And he had seen it and ran because it was so terrible uh, to, to look at. And the, the, the head doctor there, when I found him, uh, he was a skeptic, but he would go to the Catholic Church and have them to pray over his, him that the devils would not, would not, would not kill him. And, and so uh, I went into that situation, prayed for that girl. God set her free. My picture was in the newspapers that size, and, and the story was on the front page. And I became a person in the Philippines unlike anyone else. And through that, God gave us a revival where in one meeting, 150,000 people came to Jesus. And we have had, from that time until now, the greatest move of God that you could ever imagine. I want you to study it further. Uh, this is just to present it to you. On page 58, you have the story of a boy. Now, that was a girl. This was a boy. His name was Cornelio. Uh, his, his father uh, was a man uh, who had uh, uh, been in the American Navy for 20 years and was retired from it. They were good, respectable people, quite middle-class people. And this boy, uh, Cornelio here, uh, would just vanish and evaporate. The, the school teacher that taught him had a nervous breakdown and never got over it. When, when, I, when I talked to her personally, she'd had a complete nervous breakdown. She said she would never teach school again. And this boy was to blame for it. This boy ruined her health by disappearing in the schoolroom, evaporating. He'd be writing at the board, and gone. No door moved, no window moved. He was gone, leaving a stench behind. He might come back in the next day or the following day, and, and there he'd be, you know. And, and so uh, it, was a, you know, it was a very terrible thing. It all started, he said, coming home from school, and he saw a very pretty girl, and when she touched him, 
uh, he, he became invisible. Uh, when, when she touched him, he became invisible. And it started that way until every time this was a spirit that touched him. It was a Methodist pastor who brought, who brought this boy uh, to my uh, attention and to one of my services in a Methodist church where I was preaching and teaching. And God set that boy free. And he has been free ever since. The whole story here runs over to page, uh, to page uh, 62. And uh, that boy is well today. And uh, it's another example of an alien entity and a human person and God setting that person free. You see, you got to believe that God is able to do it and that God can do it and that you are an instrument of God in getting it done. I want you to study that. We also have a, uh, you know, a, a TV show uh, for 30 minutes and it tells a story. Uh, uh, we, we had very fine uh, craftsmen and, and movie makers to, to create these for us there in the Philippines showing you. So you can order these if you want a video of this to keep there uh, with you to show just on, on those two persons, uh, the girl that was bitten by devils and the boy that uh, supernaturally disappeared. He could be standing right in front of you and, and, and vanish uh, just like that. We, we have come to page 63 and your teaching syllabus. And in here, I, I tell you how I discovered alien entities in humans. Now, uh, I, I was reared in a full gospel church, you know, until I was grown. I never heard this subject discussed like you've heard it. Not one single time. And there were no books about it. I never saw a book about it. I go off to the mission field when I'm 20 years old, go into Indonesia and find in almost every service some kind of, some kind of an operation of Satan against the meeting. And I had to learn in order to win souls or, or, or sit down in defeat, I had to learn how to deal with that thing. And so it was on the mission field, beginning in Indonesia, going to Singapore and going into Hong Kong, going into Indochina, going into Tibet, going into China and Mongolia and Manchuria and Korea and in Japan, across Russia into Poland. I learned a lot about it in Poland, in France, in Scandinavia, in England, and then coming back into America, I began to learn more. I'd never seen a manifestation of it until I had been around the world and come back and come back to America. And so I learned in what you call the school of experience. So what we are teaching you here is from the Bible in the school of experience, how we learned through actual experience these things. So we're not teaching you something we read. You know, some teachers teach you out of a book. They say, now open your books and we'll read together. And he is teaching you what somebody else has written. We're not doing that. We're teaching you from experience of what we have experienced and how we work with these things. All these lessons have to do with inside of us how we deal with demon oppressions, demon uh, obsessions, how we deal with these things in our meetings as we travel, as we go, you see. And we're learning every day. No, no, no two of them are like, you can't I expect me to give you a formula and that you'll be able to deal with all demon power. That is not true. That is not true. You look through the Bible, Paul dealt with them one way, Peter another way, Jesus another way. It's only dealing with them as the Lord directs you how to deal with these. And so I discovered these uh, by, by ministering. Just going right out there, Matthew 10 and 1, it says, that Jesus called unto him 12 disciples, and he gave them power against unclean spirits. Now, that's what God did to me. He gave me power against unclean spirits to cast them out and to heal all manner of sickness and all manner of, of diseases. So I grew up in what was called Christian America. <laughs> it's not that anymore. And I didn't see any of this, but today there's hardly never a week that someone doesn't come to be set free from demon power. And your city and the city where I am right here teaching, I can assure you there are many people that need to be set free from alien entities. Religion can't do it. Doctrine can't do it. But Jesus can do it. And we hope that you will, you will do that. So uh, you find on 63, I first discovered in Indonesia, and I, I don't want to go into those. They're very exciting and very interesting, uh, just, just how it all worked. Uh, but, uh, but God showed me how to set people free and how glad I am for that. Now, on page 66 here, uh, we tell you the story of a man that had 2,000 entities in him. Now, you know the story. It's in Mark's Gospel, chapter 5. And this demoniac confronted Jesus and he recognized Jesus. Uh, he confesses Jesus. Isn't, isn't, that, isn't that amazing? He confesses Jesus. The demoniac was delivered. The demoniac requested discipleship. The demoniac became a disciple 
and followed the Lord Jesus, to follow the Lord Jesus Christ. And he said, go back to your home. He was of the Gadarene people. There were 10 towns and cities across the Sea of Galilee there. He went back to those own people and prepared them for Jesus' next journey. Now, turn the page to 68, and here we give you from the Bible uh, a person called Mary Magdalene. She had seven entities in her. If you don't study these, you won't know how to deal with your situations. We put them here for you to ardently study and possibly to preach. If you're a preacher, just talk about them, preach about them. There's where you establish your strength. There's where you establish, you know, your potential. It's when you're teaching about them. It says uh, in Mark 16 and 9, when Jesus was risen on the early, the first day of the week, that's the, week at, the day after the Sabbath. It's, it, it's our Sunday, and it's what the Jews would call Monday after their Sabbath. He appeared first to Mary Magdalene, out of whom he had cast seven devils. And, and so this was an infamous woman, no doubt full of adultery. He lived in the town of Magdala. We pass by there every time we go to the Holy Land. We can take you by there. If you will go with us, we go each November uh, to the Holy Land. You should write and say, Brother Sumrall, I'd like to go with you. We go every November. Uh, this, this year we will, have, we will have about 350 to 400 people. And uh, we have a three-day conference in Jerusalem. And God speak to you in Jerusalem. You just better believe it. So Jesus found Mary. He cast seven devils out of her. And you say, what were those spirits? Well, I'm not real sure, but uh, having dealt with people, I would say one was a, a spirit of rebellion. A person doesn't, a, a girl, an unmarried girl doesn't get in a mess like this unless she's got real deep rebellion in her. She's rebelled against her parents, her neighbors, her, her, her local clergy, and she has rebelled. And then a spirit of anger. She is deeply embedded in anger. Somebody's mistreated her. Somebody hasn't respected her. Somebody has raped her uh, un until she is angry at the whole world. And then the next spirit he must have cast out of her would be lust. That she was full of adultery and full of har harlotry. She was making money. He was making money with her womanhood and, 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 uh, and, and was full of, of dirty, filthy lusts for, 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 for men in order that she might satisfy her adulterous spirit. And no doubt, she had a spirit of hate. She hated every man she laid with. She knew that he was just there in order to entertain his own, his own depravity, and she hated him for it, possibly even hated the money he paid to her uh, for, his, for, for his fornication. And no doubt, there was a spirit of pride. She'd walk through the streets, and everybody would say, there goes a harlot, and, and, and there goes a whore, and she'd lift her head up and say, I'm better than you. I'm, I'm better than you, <laughs> you know, pride. And maybe one of those spirits was lying because all harlots are liars. All harlots are liars. It can't be a good harlot without being a good liar. They go, they go together. A spirit of lying, and no doubt she was also involved in witchcraft, in some form of witchcraft. Now, that's my guess. You know, the Bible doesn't give you the seven spirits that came out of her. That, that's my guess. That's, that seems to be the ones that would most likely be within her. She was also sick, and maybe she sought Jesus because of the weakness of her own body. And, and the Word says that she has a, that had spirits and infirmities. So now, now the devil will make you sick, you know, as well as anything else. So Mary left her old life, and, and she supported Jesus' ministry. And, and Luke 8 and 2, it says, Certain women which had been healed of evil spirits and infirmities, Mary called Magdalene, out of whom seven devils went. So they, there, there she was, healed of evil spirits and infirmities. She may have had gondolier and claps and all the rest of the mess put together, you know, from messing around with a bunch of dirty men, and, and uh, besides being full of the devil. But Jesus healed her of everything and, and, uh, and cast the devils out of her. Verse 3 says, And Joanna, the wife of Chusa, Herod, Stuart, and Susanna, and many others, which ministered unto Jesus of their substance. And so she followed Jesus, ministered unto him of her substance, and did all that she could. She, sh she was closer to Jesus than most people. She was the first one that saw him after he rose from the dead. She was the first one that preached the resurrection, saying, He is risen from the dead, as he said. So Mary followed Jesus right to the cross. When you couldn't find disciples because of fear, the Bible says she stood near the cross, near the cross. It says Mary Magdalene was there. That's in John uh, 19, 25. It, Jesus' mother was there, uh, and, and his mother's sister was there. Mary, the wife of Cleophas, was there. Mary Magdalene was there. Matthew 27, many women were beholding afar off which followed Jesus from Galilee and ministering, among which was Mary Magdalene, you see. 
and Mary the mother of James and Joseph and the mother of Zebedee's children. And so she became one of those, though she had been an outcast and a harlot and all that mess, she became a beautiful, beautiful person that just stayed real close to Jesus along with these other women to, to minister to him all the days of his life. So Mary was the first one to the tomb. There's your John 20 and 1, Mark 16, 1, Mark 16, uh, 5 and 6 and so forth. John 20 and 2, I'll tell you that she was the first one there in order to be the first one to carry the resurrection. Mary was the first to see the risen Lord. Mary was the first evangelist of the resurrection. That's what Jesus can do. It, it, it doesn't matter if you've been possessed or hurt. Uh, you can be first. <laughs> uh, here's one that came from the last to be the first. She was a tail and she became the head. Not, not that Jesus promoted her. She promoted herself. You know, you can stay so close to Jesus, he can't do anything about it. Uh, Jesus did not grab John's head and lay it over on his shoulder. John laid his own head on his shoulder. And if you were jealous of that, uh, then all you had to do was say, well, I do like John. Jesus never pushes anybody away, you know. You know, he doesn't do that. Now, we want to give you uh, another one of these. You find it in the Acts of Apostles, chapter 16. You find it in page 71 of your teaching syllabus. And here's a story of a fortune teller possessed of an alien entity that uh, the apostle uh, Paul uh, uh, found him, uh, found her. And, and set her free, and, and, uh, and what a beautiful, what a beautiful deliverance it was. From the beginning of time, on page 71, uh, persons have felt that, that possession information uh, beyond the normal human mind, uh, you know, was very seldom and very few times. Yet there are those who seek for the influence uh, in, in leaders in business and in politics that they might, that they might influence them through demon power. When Joseph arrived in Egypt, Pharaoh already had magicians. This was 1,700 years before Christ. And he was loaded with those people around about him that were full of the devil. They always gravitate to power. Demons gravitate to power because they want to rule. And Moses had to come in there and come against all those enchantments. And, and he broke their power and he delivered the people uh, by the mighty power of God. Also in the book of Daniel, he, he shows you in Daniel 2 and 2 how they were in Babylon were magicians and astrologers and sorcerers and Chaldeans, and they were all in high places to destroy the king, to destroy the kingdom. The devil is a destroyer. On page 7 to 3, pagan discovery of men of God. As they walked the streets, they were seen. The proclamation was not the knowledge of the girl. It was an alien entity that says, I know who you are. You're the, you're the people of the most high God. And so uh, you, will, you will discover that, that demons recognize you. <laughs> they, they will uh, know your name. There, there are millions possessed by alien entity in, the, in this area uh, that the girl was in, that Paul, that Paul ministered to. Uh, you, you will find there uh, astrology. You will find there crystal ball gazing, a card reading, palm reading, uh, seances, and things of this nature will lead you to uh, an alien entity possessing you. Please stay away from those type of things. They're doors opening up to demon power. God's word regarding fortune telling, as I've read you before in Deuteronomy chapter 18, verse 9, when thou art come into the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee, thou shalt not learn to do after the abominations of those nations. They already given themselves to the devil. There shall not be found among you anyone that maketh his son or his daughter to pass through the fire. This was a pagan ritual, demon power ritual, that uses divination, observer of the times, enchanter, or a witch, charmer, consult a spirit, a familiar spirit, a wizard, or a necromancer. All of these things are an abomination unto Jehovah. God don't love heathen demon worship because the devils are against him. He cast them out of heaven. How could he have any fellowship with that bunch? They're rebels. He threw them out. They're, de they're destroyed. One day they will be in hell forever. And God says unto you and to me, don't suffer those people to be around you in Jesus' name. Don't do it. Keep yourself clean. Keep yourself free from the, by the mighty power of God. Keep yourself free. And if you'll do that, God will certainly bless you. God will help you. And God will strengthen you. We hope we haven't uh, passed these last a few lessons too quickly for you. We want to complete our total syllabus, you know, and, and move through it all. And these we have already spoken of previously, these mighty deliverances and so forth. And so I'm sure that they're, they're a padding uh, for, your, uh, for your ministering and padding for your teaching, for you to understand these things 
And, and, and remember, when you have deliverance, write it down, make notes on it, and follow it up. Give dates to it, where they live, street address. Give every, all the information. Then when you speak about it, you, you can say Sarah, Sarah Williams uh, living in, 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 in 910 uh, Artifacts Avenue here uh, at, at 7.30 in the evening came. She was delivered of a certain spirit. She is now set free, and I went to see her two weeks later. She is completely free. You see? And you'll have a story of it. Keep it Keep it in your teaching syllabus where you can always find it. It won't be lost. And when you teach in, in this message, uh, by all means, you will understand it. Now, I, I'd like to say something very clear to you. Uh, I'm glad that all the classes in your school, you know, are not the same as this lesson here. This is the unique in that it is helping you in, in a certain area. There are other truths very important. The gifts of the Holy Spirit are very important. And, and there are many other truths that are so very important to you, to know, to know the Bible, to know the books of the Bible, uh, to understand prophecy is, is so very important. And, and uh, if a person starts talking on this all the time, uh, there's something wrong with him. I pastor a large church. I seldom ever mention this subject in my church. You say, well, why? I do not want my people to be devil conscious. The people around Jesus were not demon conscious. They were Jesus conscious. They were joy conference. They were peace conscious, you see? We want you to be the same. We just want you uh, to be a normal person. When you come up against a situation, just to walk right out, rebuke it, destroy it, and keep walking. Don't keep it on your brain all the time. There are people that all they think about is demon power. And they, I see a demon here, and I see a demon there. No, you don't see anything. You don't see anything. You're just lying, and, and, and it's all in your brain. You need deliverance yourself, and that's what you need. Uh, it is not true. It is simply not true. Now, I have been dealing with this longer than anybody else living. I've been dealing with it for 50 straight years without any break, you know, without going away from it, uh, without backing up, without changing my doctrine. Are you there? I am giving it now just like I gave it 50 years ago. And, and, and uh, the same is true now as it was then. I want you to be conscious of Jesus. And, and, and there are certain, certain things uh, that I would like to tell you such as when you start to set a person free, don't roll them around on the floor for an hour. The devil, the devil really likes chiropractor treatments. And if you will afford him and bump them on the back and bump them on the front and bump them all around, he, he likes that. He likes a lot of attention. In the Bible, they did not do that. They said, come out, and they were set free. Now, that's all you have to do. If you say, come out, and they're not free, you go better go back into a quiet room and talk to Jesus and say, Lord, why was it? I could not cast them out. The Lord will show you if you've been living a carnal life, if you're half steeped in unbelief anyway, then of course you cannot. Get yourself ready. Get it? Not God. God is always ready. Get yourself ready. The, the person that's possessed is ready, so everybody's ready but you. Normally it takes me 30 seconds to do it. I've, I've, in, in the last two or three days, I have set people three, free in less than a minute, and they're free. And, and, and they know they're free because the power of deliverance came and they were set free. So it is not a thing that you need to take a long time with. If you take a long time with it, it's because you were not prepared for it. When Jesus came down from the mountain and his disciples could not set the boy free, it only took Jesus a few seconds to set him free. He did not have to roll him around on the ground with his hand. He did not have to cry, come out, come out, come out. He did not have to say, what's your name? How many are you? What are you doing in there? Come on out now. Devils are liars. If you ask him questions, you'll never get back truth. So you're talking to liars, you're receiving lies, and then you're praying a lie. Are you there? And now this simply means leave them alone, command them to come out, and they have to obey. I wish there were other questions of yours that I could help you with. On page 75, it says, here are the pertinent inquiries regarding alien entities. Now, now, now that's what I was dealing with there with you. I'm asked more questions about the world of demonic influence than any other subject, any other subject. I'm asked more questions. You can get together a hundred ministers. Let them write on a piece of paper a question that does not have their name on it to where they're not identified with it, and 90% of them will come back, what do you do? What do you do with demon power? Who is possessed and who isn't possessed, and how do you set them free? That, that, that to me, is a very amazing a situation that our ministers today, if the ministers don't understand it, how do the laity understand?
That's what you're going to Bible school for, that you will be a man of God and a woman of God who understands this subject and that you are able, when you leave this class, we don't want you to have head knowledge. We want you to have heart knowledge. We want you to be able to set people free by the power of God. We want you to be able to bring the de deliverance by the great power of God. We want you to set others free. Please do, in Jesus' name. All right, you're open to page 75 there. Uh, here, here are questions. I call them pertinent inquiries regarding alien entities. Number one, how many alien entities are there? I, I guess that's a, you know, an honest question. <laughs> uh, the Bible says that under the devil's leadership, one-third of the angels of heaven fell, so that, that could be a few hundred million. Are you there? A few hundred million. The devil has plenty of people working for him, plenty of demons working for them. All those beautiful angels are now evil spirits. They have changed in their image. They're ugly. They're mean-looking. They're horrible, terrible creatures. They don't look human nor animal. They're, they're miserable messes. Don't ever look at them. Don't ever play with them. Don't ever mess with them. Don't ever permit them to manifest. Refuse their manifestation. All you want to see is Jesus and him high and lifted up. As for the first one here that you find on page 75, how many alien interests are there? Unnumbered. Nobody's ever been able to number them. Nobody knows the number. There are many, and, and, and they don't matter. <laughs> it don't matter. You can lick them all. The he that is in you is greater than he that's in the world. The devil's in the world. Jesus is in you. You're stronger. You can set people free, so don't be afraid of their number. Number two, can an alien entity attack a Christian only from the outside? not inside. He can come to your ear and say, this is going to happen, that's going to happen. You can say, go. He can say, wouldn't you like to see a pretty naked woman? No, go. You see, he can only attack you from the outside. He cannot attack a Christian from the inside because Jesus is in there. Now, the devil tempted Jesus, but he never got inside. He was always outside, talking to Jesus from the outside. As long as he is on the outside, on the outside, he'll say, you're not saved. Why does he know about it? He, he don't know what salvation is. He's never had any. So all you do is say, how do you know? You don't know anything. I know that I'm saved. My spirit bears witness with God's spirit, and I know I'm saved. Isn't that beautiful? Isn't that beautiful? He, he can say, oh, you're not spiritual. What does he know about it? He's never been spiritual. He doesn't know anything about it. Say, well, you don't know anything about it. I walk before the Lord. I read the Word of God. I witness. I testify. I sing and I shout. I am Spiritual! <laughs> yeah, you see? Yes, an alien entity can attack. That's all he can do. He can then be defeated, unless you listen to him. If he says, be afraid, be afraid, be afraid, you let fear come in your heart, he's won a victory. Don't do that. You don't have to do that. There should be no fear inside of a Christian person, any kind of any nature. Are alien entities more active in one nation than another? Yeah. There are whole nations like India, Indonesia, Tibet, Afghanistan, Pakistan, <laughs> that they've given themselves over to this thing for centuries, 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 centuries. Did you know the gospel what was preached all through those countries one time? They refused the gospel. Read Romans chapter 1, the whole chapter. And, and so those nations, those nations have far more demon activity than a country like America does, or Canada, or Australia, where you've got millions of people praying. There are millions of people praying in America any minute of the day or night. Thank God for Christian people that pray. <laughs> and I know you say amen to that, don't you? All right, that was kind of an alien entity attack to Christian, yes. Are there alien entities more active in one nation than another? Yes. Thank God for that. They'd, let's hold them down in this country that the activities don't move around. Can a demon-possessed person be set free against his will? No. No, he cannot. You can pray for a demon-possessed person who has no brain and no mind, like I did the little girl in the Philippines. She, 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 she was totally possessed, you know. And, and I, I came against the thing and set her free. Then after that, I said, I said, Clarita, speak to the Spirit. Say, go in Jesus' name. I don't want you. I don't like you. Go. And she did, and that's when she stayed free. When her voice spoke out, that's when she stayed free. 
If you only have a spirit of lust, spirit of hate, spirit of jealousy, spirit of alcoholism, you have to want to be free before you can be set free. You have to desire to be free. And if you set a person free against their will, they get possessed again in a few hours, a few days. They get right back in the same hole they came out of. So you've wasted your time anyway. Number five is possession by alien entities constant or is it sporadic? An alien entity desires to have you all the time. That is the desire of that alien entity, to possess you at all times. He may not manifest, you know. He may lay dormant inside of you several days and do nothing and suddenly rise up like a storm <laughs> on the inside of you. And, and so uh, uh, you are uh, possessed on a constant basis, but you, they are manifested normally, manifested on a sporadic basis. It'd have to be that way or they'd kill you. If they manifested themselves every two or three hours, you'd soon die. You know, you wouldn't, you couldn't, your body couldn't stand it on the face of this earth. And so the manifestation is sporadic, but the possession when they are in you is a constant situation. You are possessed and they don't leave on their own. Number six, how many demons can one person have? Now, in, in a body, you've seen kids get in, in, inside of a, a telephone booth and had them brag they're 13 inside, and, and you've seen pictures of it, and, and, and they were just flesh against every wall in, in that telephone booth about to suffocate. Uh, now, you could put in 13 kids in there, uh, teenagers, but you could put a million demons because they don't take up any space. Spirits do not take up physical space. Physical space, they do not take up. And so the man that said he had 2,000 demons in him possibly was telling the truth, you know. Mary had seven within her. The witch doctor in Brazil had 300 that he talked to, and it manifested in him. And so um, it is unlimited, the number of evil things that could be within you. There was a man in the Bible that was set free of a spirit, and the spirit came back to repossess him and brought seven other spirits, which means now he had eight spirits on the inside of him rather than one. And so they do not take up physical space. And you can have manifestation of, of many. Now, now, spirits don't just stay inside. They roam around. The, the spirit that possesses you can, can, can be around in the area and then for a manifestation hit inside of you. Uh, I was kind of laughing at a, at a priest in China one time. He had a great big Buddha. He must have been 20 foot high. And he had incense at the bottom and, and had food down there praying to the Buddha. And I said, you, you know that that image there don't have any power. You know that thing's made of uh, wood or something other and painted gold. Uh, you, you know it's not, you know, you know it doesn't have any power. He says, yes, it does. And he says, now, 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 now listen to me. And he took me around to the back of the image, and there was a hole in the back of it, like 12 inches around it. It was a round hole. He said, this is the entrance in and out of the image. It's a hollow image. The spirit goes and comes. So to tell you the truth, he's not here right now. But said, if I kneel down in front of this image, and I, I burn these, these joss sticks here, and, and I burn this incense, and I offer food to him, and I cry deep within me, come, 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 O image of Buddha, come. He'll come. He may be in the mountains. He will come. And says, you'd be frightened if you were here because his presence fills all this whole place here. And, 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 and sometimes it even knocks humans over. But says he's not here right now. But if I seek for his presence, uh, he will come. A and so uh, uh, it's the same with a person. You can have a manifestation of an evil. Maybe you have it once a week or once a month or something like that. And otherwise you might look normal and seem normal uh, and, until that thing strikes you. How many demons can a person have unlimited? Uh, uh, can many demons possess one person? Yes, they can. Can demons be inherited? Uh, yes, they can. Uh, we, we have known of generations of people who were demon-possessed, passing down from, they wanted it, they desired it, they wished for it. Demons passed down from generation to generation. They can, they can be inherited, all right? Can a, can a person be possessed and not know it? No, unless you're a child or a baby. Because when you are possessed, something that rises up within you, strength greater than your strength, power above your intelligence, and you're conscious of that. And a voice will come out of you that's not your voice. 
eyes so piercing, they're not your eyes. And so there could not be a person possessed that did not know it. He might have different names for it, you see. He might say, this is a manifestation of a good spirit. <laughs> and you see, and not say that it is a demon, a demon, a demon spirit. And I want you to know that people that are possessed in other countries do not feel it is bad. They feel it is great. And they do it with great pride. And they boast about it. I have such and such a spirit dwelling within me. It manifests itself at certain times. But there is never any feeling of evil about it until they come in the presence of Jesus. That, that, that demon in the Bible there in the synagogue, was, was, as they were singing, in the synagogue was quite at home until Jesus walked in. And it cried out, have you come to torment me before my time? Have you come to torment me before my time? They know they're going to be judged. They know there's judgment for demons. They're going to go to hell just like the devil. They know that. They're entities. They're persons. They're, per they're angels that did live in heaven. And because of their rebellion against God, they're going to spend eternity in hell. There is no salvation for them of any kind. And they know that. And so they hurt everybody they can on their way on, on their way to hell. At number eight, a person does know that they are possessed. And if there's any doubt in your mind, have some person that is spiritual to help you. And he will certainly, he will certainly be able to help you. The ninth question, can animals be possessed? Yes, they can. Uh, you've heard of them uh, shooting a horse because it becomes wild, uh, because it becomes uncontrollable, because it becomes a, a killer horse. Yeah, it became possessed. Uh, animals of many kinds can become possessed. I don't think animals that are under the care of good Christians can become possessed. You see, they pray over their animals. I remember when I was a boy how my mother prayed over her little chickens, over her roosters, over her hens. She, she, she prayed over the, our cow. And if one of them got sick or something, she would ride out and laid hands on them and prayed for them just like they were humans. She loved her, she loved her, her chickens and she loved her cows. And, and so she would pray over, lay her hands on them and bless them. But you, you go into the world of animals and you will find that animals can be possessed. In the Bible, there were 2,000 pigs that were possessed and they ran into the lake of Galilee, the Sea of Galilee, and they drowned. And their sediments are at the bottom of the Sea of Galilee until this day for this simple reason. They didn't want devils in them. So devils can be possessed. Number 10, can Christians be cursed by demons? No. No. If a, if, if a, if a demon-possessed person says, I curse you, <laughs> you laugh and say, oh, you do. I don't believe in curses. I don't accept curses. But seeing that you do, I send it back to you double. Take it and give them the double whammy. Let them have it. They believe in it. You don't believe in it. You can't accept it. You say, is that in the Bible? Yeah. The Word of God says, how can I curse whom God hath not cursed? You there? It can also work on the other side. How can I bless whom God hath not blessed? You try to bless the heathen and it's a losing job. You better get them saved. The United Nations is made up mostly of pagan countries. We spend billions of dollars trying to help them. They are worse off right now than they were 40 years ago. Millions of them are dying of starvation and famine and all that mess, you see. Why? How can I bless whom God hath not blessed? The beginning of their help is Jesus. The beginning of their help is redemption. The beginning of their help is to turn against the devil. That is the beginning of their help. And, and so you as a Christian cannot be cursed. Now, I have Christians that come to me saying, someone put a curse on me. That's a lie. Sorry that you believed. Now, now you, might be, you might just be a church member. In that case, they could. We're not talking about church members. There are people that are church members that are not right with God. They don't live clean. They don't live pure. They don't live holy. They don't live humble. They don't have the personality of Jesus in them. And so those people, of course, could be cursed, but not born again. If you're talking about Peter and Paul, no, sir. Devils don't even like to get near to them because they get hurt when they do. And so there is redemption. There's blessing. There's power in Jesus. And, and you, cannot, you cannot bring a curse upon a Christian person. I'm sure that I have been cursed hundreds of times never felt it at all, never bothered at all. The devil cannot cross the blood that surrounds me, the blood of Jesus Christ, God's Son. So a Christian cannot be cursed. Number 11, 
Are there always physical manifestations when entities leave? No, not necessarily. No, 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 not necessarily. They are a spirit. They are a spirit. They can go out any part of the human because they are a spirit. You see, they can leave right out. If they're in the belly, they just, they're just gone. They're just gone. If they're in uh, this area of the body, they just go out. Uh, they are gone. They are spirits. They don't need a human manifestation to come in or go out. They didn't need a human manifestation to come in. And they don't need a human manifestation to go out. And so you don't have to look for manifestations. You just say, leave, go, and they're gone. And then you start shouting, praising, and rejoicing in God. Number 12 says, can a house be possessed of demons? You better believe it. There are ghost houses. There are houses where the devil makes a home there. He rattles the windows. He knocks the doors. He turns over the furniture. He throws things across the room. It's a house possessed of demons. There are many of them. They can be cleansed through prayer and seeking God. You can say to these spirits, I don't care how long you've been here. They have a lot more of these in Europe where tragedies have taken, that's usually where they are, where tragedies have taken place, where people have been murdered. Uh, those are places where their spirits, demon spirits can linger in those places. But you as a Christian have a right to expel them and exorcise them and say, go and get out in Jesus' holy name. I have a little more here. We will begin on page 65 uh, again, and uh, we have a little more to deal with there. I'll mark it here, and you mark it also, so that we'll begin right there in our next lesson. And so be praying about it, be seeking the Lord about it, and, and be studying. Study your total syllabus, not one time. Go back and come through it again. Make new notes in it. Rearrange anything there you like. These are just inspirational. You know, the, the notes in here are inspirational out of my spirit. And so you might enlarge them. You might increase them. You might make them better. I don't know. But do, but start from here. Don't start down there. Start from where I have brought you and then go up in it. Greater knowledge, greater understanding, greater authority, and greater power. Lord, bless my neighbor right now. Bless my friend. Bless every student. If there are any troubles, if there are any hurt, heal them right now. I command fear to come out of you. I command confusion to go from you. I command you right now to be blessed of the Lord, of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Be thou blessed and refreshed and rejoice in the victories that belong to you as the children of the Most High God. In Jesus' name, be blessed. I want to thank you so deeply for being in this class, for studying with me, and I am glad that I can share with you many years of living on the face of the earth under all kinds of conditions, all kinds of human beings in over 100 nations of the world that I can share with you right there in your town, in your city where you are, uh, that you're studying by satellite. The miracle of satellite is so precious. <laughs> 22,300 miles up there is the satellite. And it goes up and comes back before you can blink an eye. And that's right. Before you can blink an eye, I'm right down there where you are. Isn't that beautiful? Isn't that beautiful? Before you can blink an eye, we're there teaching you the Word of God. We didn't realize a few years ago that such a miracle would be possible as today. So in, in the satellite classes, be blessed, be loved, and be strong in the faith. Be strong in God. And study and study and study. Won't you do that? And we will be thankful for you, and we will be praying with you that God will certainly bless you in setting many people free. Now, don't go out looking for trouble. Don't go out seeking to see and find how many. Let troubles come to you. And as they come, be strong in God inside and say, if you come to me, I pray for you, and I set you free by the blood of Jesus. So thank you very much. Let me say to all of you right now that when you're studying like this, you are improving your faith, you're increasing your faith, you're strengthening your faith. And when your faith is strengthened, your doubts and your fears die. So we just ask you to let them die and let your faith live forever. Thank you.